One of the problems with my nitrate reactor was that rocks would get stuck in the tube. Simple fix for that would be to just hot glue mesh over top. Um, this prevented you from adjusting the flow if one rock got stuck. But what this video is going to be about is the progress I've made with my nitrate reactor and some of the things that you might as well want to add to it. I've been running this for maybe half a year. And I've been switching it between different flow weights from starting at 30 gallons per uh, hour as Seachem recommended for the denitrate. And I've eventually tried drip rates. And I haven't got any noticeable or effective results out of it. But I'm currently using this on my goldfish tank. So other than uh, my filter, this is the only thing that is reducing nitrates other than water changes and I haven't noticed any noticeable results my nitrates are still high I don't get even lower nitrates coming out of the filter than I do out of my tank to be fair it could be could have been working just my goldfish produced so much waste that it was unnoticeable but um I figured if I at least drop the flow rates to drip rates that I would notice some uh, decrease in nitrates compared to my tank however I haven't and so it led me to think that my nitrate reactor isn't working close as effectively as I thought it would or I hoped it would so I am going to be going with uh, an extra 20 feet of tubing and my hope is, kind of in the same way a coil denitrator works, is that if I get uh, a nice 20 feet of tubing, hopefully it'd reduce more of the oxygen. Because I'd assume the reason why my denitrator isn't working is because there's too much oxygen getting to the filter. So I'm going to add a 20 feet of tubing. So this is what it looks like with the additional 20 feet of hose. If you were doing the setup like I did in my previous video, just buy 40 feet and because you're going to need some to return back to the tank. Also, if any of you guys have a good idea for a way to fill a hose with uh, some type of plastic biomedia, leave it in the comments down below because I'd imagine adding more surface area the better. What was really surprising was the addition of hose actually made a difference in the nitrate reduction. These are two API nitrate test kits taken from my goldfish tank. This one is from the water straight out of the tank. This one is from my nitrate reactor. And as you can see, they look very different. Uh, that means my nitrate reactor is putting out no nitrates when my tank has nitrates. So, it means my nitrate reactor is working, which makes me very excited. Um, so it does show uh, how important it is actually to have a long tube to the nitrate reactor. Because when I was running my nitrate reactor, basically at drip rates at the same rate actually, uh, I was still getting the same nitrates out of it. But adding the hose, even just after two weeks, made the difference between having no denitrification to denitrification. I'd assume this is also why most people get um, better results when they have two nitrate reactors in line, when instead you could probably get similar or even the exact same results by just adding a length of hose. So I just wanted to sh quickly display what the drip where it was when I got these zero nitrate readings. Uh, I believe the drip rate's extremely important because it really makes a difference between getting no nitrates and completely filled with nitrates. And a good example of this is because I increased the flow too significantly. I increased it to a rapid drip from that very slow drip you see there. And what ended up happening is my nitrate reactor stopped working and I started actually reading nitrates on my nitrate test kit as you can see from here. All in all there's still more testing to be done. I have no idea if this nitrate reactor will even be enough to handle a goldfish tank for example. 
And even if the nitrate reactor doesn't work in its current setup, there's still more adjustments I could do. And one of them, which I encourage you to check out yourself, is using wood as a carbon source, as well as using sulfur-based medias. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I have much more interesting freshwater and saltwater content coming your way.